and the filters are the best selling accessories for drones. But many users don't know much about them and often ask if they should buy them and why. In this video we will explain why the Mini 3 Pro needs ND filter more than any other drone or camera. I will also show if and why they are needed for video, photography and hyperlapses. Finally we will see which brand and which kits to buy. There is a widespread misconception that ND filters are needed to expose correctly on very bright days. This is not true. There are three tools we can use in order to get a correct exposure. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Most consumer drones don't offer manual control of aperture. But even in this case we can always expose correctly by using a much faster shutter speed. So, we certainly do not need ND filters to expose in bright conditions. But there is something specific to the Mini 3 Pro when exposing. Due to the extremely wide aperture of f1.7, in very bright conditions the image can be overexposed even when choosing the base ISO and the fastest shutter speed. The only way to expose correctly under these conditions is to use ND filter. It is the only drone or camera I have tried to behave this way. So the Mini 3 is the exception to the rule. We need ND filters to dial in the correct exposure in very bright conditions by reducing the amount of light entering the sensor. In most cases we use ND filters to use a specific shutter speed value regardless of the light conditions. But why should we want to use a specific shutter speed? Time lapses are all about movement and movement involves motion blur as this is the way our eyes see motion. So the correct amount of motion blur is crucial for time lapses, a make or break factor. The standard method used in videography for correct motion blur is called the 180 degrees rule and consists, in the case of time lapses, in using a shutter speed of 1 second with a frequency of 2 shots per second, a shutter speed of 1.5 seconds with a frequency of 1 shot every 3 seconds, shutter speed of 2 seconds with a frequency of a shot every 4 seconds, and so on. In all the time lapses I'm showing now, taken with a full frame camera on a tripod, I have used this rule. As you can see the result is perfectly smooth and mimic what our eyes would see at that speed. Of course, in order to get such a long shutter speed, we need ND filters. Let's see now what happens if we don't use ND filters and we have to resort to much faster shutter speed. Ouch, the result is extremely jumpy and stuttering, unwatchable. It hurts my eyes. This is because there is practically no motion blur. Motion blur is the one factor that makes or breaks a time lapse or hyperlapse. You can click on this link to watch my video about all you need to know to master motion blur. When shooting time lapses with drones, there are some specific limitations compared with traditional cameras, as with drones in most cases we cannot use a shutter speed slower than one second without losing the tail due to camera shake. Therefore, we have to somehow compromise and reduce the amount of precious motion blur, but this result can still be obtained. As you can see the movement of the cars and the smoothness of the clouds are acceptable in this drone time lapse with a shutter speed of half a second. So obviously for time lapse and hyperlapse ND filter are an absolute must. I would not even attempt a hyperlapse without ND filters. As we have seen earlier, according to the 180 degree rules, we use a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second with a frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second, a shutter speed of 1 60th with a frame rate of 
30 frames per second and 120 at the frame rate of 60 frames per second and so on. This is to reproduce movement the same way as we see it in real life. Let's see some example, but one thing to notice is that professional video cameras often are equipped with built-in ND filters and that is already a hint. Quite often drone footage is shot from high altitude. When the subject is far away and there are no moving elements, the difference in motion blur is hardly noticeable, so in this case ND filters are not strictly needed. But as soon as we get closer to the action, things get different. This car on the motorway look more natural when shooting with ND filters with the correct shutter speed, as some motion blur is applied. Without filters the movement appears jumpy and fake. In this top-down close-up view, the waves crashing on a sunny beach look perfectly smooth and natural with any filter at 1 50th of a second. Without any filter the waves are just too crispy, not the real thing, and the sand looks even less natural with too much detail and no motion blur. There are two main reasons why photographers use ND filters. The first one is to get very long exposure shots, in most cases to create a smooth, silky effect in clouds, waves and waterfalls. When taking photos with a drone we don't have the same latitude available as a drone hovering is not as stable as a camera or a tripod, even without any wind. The slower speed I can get with a drone for a clean photo without unwanted motion blur is about half a second in windless conditions. This is what the wave looks like, certainly is much smoother than without any filters, but we cannot really get the silky look achievable with a camera on a tripod, allowing for a very long exposure. The other situation that calls for the use of ND filters in photography is to have a very wide aperture in bright light conditions, in order to get a very shallow depth of field and separate the main subject from the background. But in the Mini 3 the aperture is fixed, so in this case we really do not need ND filters. For drone photography, ND filters are not a must. For someone really serious about photography, ND filter can be a desirable item, but not a necessity. ND filters are meant to reduce the amount of light entering the sensor. Some lower quality ones might introduce unwanted color casts. We obviously don't want that to happen. Over the years Freewell has consistently produced quality filters for drones at reasonable prices, even though not the cheapest. For the Mavic 3 they offer a combination of 6 ND filters ranging from ND4 to ND64, so from 2 to 6 stops, which cover all needs for videography. The pack also includes a ND1000, the big stopper, which is useful for hyperlapses. Users who are very much into hyperlapses can also purchase a 4-pack with high ND values 128, 256, 512 and 2000. The lenses of previous models of the mini series were shaped in a way that made fitting filters quite hard. With the new design of the Mini 3 lens, putting on and taking away the filters is extremely easy. Just rotate slightly clockwise with the label free well on the upper side. You will find links, info and prices for these filters in the comments below. Click on this link to watch all you need to know about time lapses and hyperlapses. It is good fun and there are some really good ones. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.